Hello and welcome to this level 3 Mathematics in Context training video for Pearson at Excel. In this video we are looking at Spearman's Rank Correlation Coefficient. The specification reference says we need to use, apply and interpret Spearman's Rank, calculate Spearman's Rank Correlation Coefficient and use it as a measure of agreement or for comparisons of the degree of correlation. And there's a reminder that tied ranks may be tested on the examination papers. The formula for Spearman's rank correlation coefficient is provided in the formula book, so it doesn't need to be memorized, and it's as shown here. A couple of the key factors are that d squared is the square of the difference in the ranks of the two values, and that n is the number of pairs of points in the data set. And we'll see an example of using it in a moment. The mapping document that maps the content of the core mass references to the GCSE is shown here with some links to GCSE statistics in particular and onto some teaching ideas. So if you're looking at Spearman's correlation coefficient, you might consider looking at gaming performance. So if you've got enough students that play the same game on their phone, they might be able to compare the time spent playing on it with what level they're on or maybe some other in-game achievements, a better measure of success perhaps. Does it follow that the more time someone has spent on a game, the better they are at it, with whatever we mean by better in that context? Uh, another idea is maybe some sort of art competition. So maybe if your students are up for it, they could make a quick piece of art. And if you really want to, you could get them to draw you. And then you can ask your art department teachers to independently rank the artwork from, I guess, best to less best and see if there's a strong correlation between rankings. Or if you want to avoid students being in that awkward situation of having to draw pictures if they're not very keen on it, then another way to do it is to look at some famous pieces of art from the internet and then ask students to rank the artworks themselves from favourite to least favourite. And then students can compare their ranking with other students' ranking and see who's got the most similar tastes in art. Some key skills for this reference include fairly major ones that students should be able to rank data and particularly dealing with the tied scores. You'll remember it was pointed out in the specification reference. Students need to be familiar with the Spearman's rank formula. And again, you've seen that it's provided for them and they should be aware of what the D and the N represent and also be comfortable with that sigma notation in there. When interpreting the value of the correlation coefficient, students should be aware of what the sign indicates and how to communicate for example, what does a strong negative value mean in that context? And students should also be aware that values close to zero indicate no correlation. Here's an exam question. And it says, a recent article stated that countries with fewer landlines have more mobile phones. We're asked to calculate Spearman's rank correlation coefficient for the data in this table. Six marks, and it's clearly instructing students exactly what they've got to do. So let's see how we would do that. First thing to note is that the number of mobile phones per 100 people is already in rank order with South Africa having the fewest per 100 and Thailand having the most. So when we're ranking those, it's just simply numbering them from one to 15. They're already in order and there are no ties in there either. So we're looking at the number of landlines per 100 people. So we find the lowest one, that's the six, Norway. So they get rank one. Uh, there's a tie next. South Africa and Thailand both have seven. So because they would be in second and third places, the average of two and three is 2.5. So they both get awarded that rank. And then moving on to the next one is Bolivia there with eight. And this catches people out sometimes because South Africa and Thailand are effectively taking up slots two and three. Bolivia is four now. Very tempting for students, but a three there. But we're on the fourth country. And keep going. So Peru is next. There's a few that just go in order. Uh, Serbia there is the ninth one on 28th. Ireland and the USA are both tied next. So because they would be 10th and 11th, their average is 10.5. And remember, they would be 10th and 11th. So the next one is 12th, which happens to be New Zealand down there. And then the other ones are just in order. Fairly simple to finish that off. So there are uh, convenient columns given, which students are very much encouraged to use. So the next column you want to use is the difference between those, just simply taking them away. So for that top one, South Africa, uh, 
sorry, 2.5 take away 1 is 1.5. Mexico will be 6 take away 2, and so on. And you'll see that some of them are negative. Norway, for example, 1 take away 7 is negative 6. Last column that we're given, so we're going to do d squared here. So simply squaring all of those values. And obviously, you should use a calculator for any of the slightly awkward ones. And notice that any of the negative ones when squared will be positive. Next thing to do is to check the formula from the formula sheet, which was this one. Does 1 minus 6 times the sum of the d squareds divided by n times, in brackets, n squared minus 1. So let's deal with the d squared. The sum of the d squareds means add up that column. And in this particular case, that comes out as 524. n is going to be 15, because there are 15 pairs of data, or 15 countries. And they're substituting those in. So 6 times 524 divided by 15 times, effectively 224. And the answer to that's all subtracted from 1, in this particular case, comes out as 0 0.0643. And we have a look at the mark scheme for that. So there's a method mark for ranking the number of landlines and the number of mobile phones, either way around, but consistently. That means that you can, you can rank them in uh, descending order if you want. You could start with the highest one. As long as you do the same on both of them, it's fine. A method mark for following through and finding the difference between their rankings. Another method mark for finding the sum of the squares of the rankings. Accuracy mark for getting that that's 524. And then a further method mark for using the Spearman's rank formula correctly with their figures substituted in. And then finally, an accuracy mark for the Spearman's rank of 0 0.06, at least that level of accuracy, and then the remaining decimal places. So the examiner report says that often students are good at this. Many students are quite familiar with it and can do it correctly. There are ranking errors occasionally, so people just not putting stuff in the right order. And sometimes that is students putting one of them ascending and the other one descending. But frequently, students are quite good at this and should expect to get the majority, if not all of the marks. The second part of that exam question then says, is the statement in the article correct? And we're asked to justify our answer. A reminder that the statement was countries with fewer landlines have more mobile phones. So fewer landlines having more mobile phones. That would be an example of negative correlation. One thing being lower suggests the other one is higher is negative correlation. But we got a correlation coefficient of 0 0.06, which is close to zero. So no correlation and not an example of anything like strong negative correlation. So the data does not support the statement that was made. And the mark scheme for that is fairly straightforward. They need to make a decision, so yes or no, and a, a statement that supports it based on the correlation coefficient. Well, we've got no correlation, so it's difficult to justify there being a correlation there. And the examiner report for this one says, that some students weren't really sure how to relate the coefficient to the context. So quite a few students were happy with like, it's close to zero, so no correlation, but then couldn't necessarily articulate how that linked to whether it supported the statement or not. And in this particular case, couldn't necessarily identify that it needed to be negative correlation to show that one. So on some last top tips, you should get students to practice ranking the data, which seems like it's a bit too easy to do to ask people to put things in order, but it's easy to make mistakes, especially in the pressure of an exam, so well worth practicing. It's always worth keeping an eye out to see if one of the sets of data has already been ranked. That's fairly common, but always worth a check. You should double check that you're ranking the data in the same order, so either both ascending or both descending. Uh, make sure that students have had a chance to experience how to deal with tied ranks, including when there are sort of three tied or even four tied ranks and how that's handled. And we should make sure that students are using the table to show all of their workings, because that will allow most of the marks, even if they make the odd arithmetical error, they're still going to pick up a lot of the method marks there. Thank you for listening to this video. I hope you found it useful. Thank you.